Okay, everybody, now that we have read the prompt, read the text, let's look at the rubric. The prompt told us what we need to write. The excerpt taught us what we need to read. Now, the rubric is going to tell us how to write to the best of our ability. So as you can see, with this particular rubric, we are looking for your ability to organize your thought. Rating, the rating is on a scale from five to one. And I'm gonna go through this quickly for the matter of time, but if you're ever using a rubric, really take the time to understand what is being asked of you. So what it comes down to is this. For organization, what we're looking for is how well you can craft a story with a complete beginning, middle, and end. Do the ideas that you are crafting within your text, do they flow in a chronological, logical fashion? Do you use transitions? First, second, third. Do you say, then this happened? Are you using transitions to move from idea to idea, from event to event? Okay, that's one thing that we're looking for. As I just stated in the last segment of the video, in which I went back into the text to start to pull information, this is where we're going to look to see how well you're able to do that. Do you seamlessly incorporate multiple pieces of evidence from the provided texts into the narrative, as well as masterful demonstration of content knowledge derived from class? So we're looking for two things how well you're able to pull information from the reading, and how well you're able to pull information that you have learned about in your classes. So that's what it comes down to in terms of how you craft this story. Once you craft the story, we are also looking for the following. How well you're using standard English conventions. All right, this is, uh, just so you know, this rubric is just a draft of the final rubric, so it might not look exactly the same, but we're looking for uh, sentence structure here, okay? We are looking to see how well you are able to uh, create a piece of writing that has a variety of sentence structures. Are you able to express your thoughts in complete sentences, demonstrating understanding of subject predicate agreement, right? You will be rated on how well you're able to do that as well as how well you are able to spell, how well you are able to incorporate proper punctuation. So we're not just looking for how well you can tell a story, we're really looking to see how well you can write the story so that the story meets the expectations of the seventh graders at Birchen Park Middle School. So what I'm doing right now is just a really quick word mapping activity where I'm able to start to take the big ideas that I just read about and start to put them on the page so that I can make sense of what I just read. So why don't you take a few moments to do the same um, and what comes to mind from what you read, just put it down on paper and it's your way of starting to have control over your own reading. The next thing I'm going to do is, now that I have jotted down some thoughts and tried to organize some of the big ideas I want to work with when I sit down with the narrative, I'm going to start to go back into the text and pull out the evidence and the pieces that I have learned that are going to help inform the setting and the characters and the conflict and the world that I need to be able to write about. So. What I've done is I've provided an example for you. Um, 
this column here, as you can see, this is all taken from the same article. If you were using different articles, this is your way of being able to organize the information that you have taken from one article to the next. But just for the purposes of this demonstration, it's all from the same article. But as you can see, I provide a quote or some sort of paraphrase from the, from the text, and then I'm able to explain it. So very, very quickly, the guardians of the forest. It's a phrase that stuck out to me, and I might want to incorporate that into my story because it's just something that has a lot of power and importance, um, and it, it, it signifies a lot of honor. <clears throat> and, and the explanation is this describes the role that the rubber tappers have to play. There's another quote. These trees are native to the American region, one of the most dangerous places uh, in the world to be an environmental defender. My explanation. The, the explanation of the trees themselves will help explain the role of the rubber tapper's function within my narrative. Information like this helps me really understand what I have to write about. Uh, an excerpt like this gives me the specific details that's going to make the world come alive. This is the process of rubber tapping. I need to know that. I explain myself here. So let's jump down to this one. Rubber tapping used to be a major economic component to Brazil, but the seeds were stolen and the rubber tapping production moved to Asia. The move crippled the industry in Brazil. Here's my explanation slash analysis. This backstory helps shape the dangerous working conditions of the present day. Had the quote unquote nefarious Englishman not stolen the seeds, could the day-to-day -day life of all Brazilians be radically different today? It makes the rubber tappers function like the last remnants of an older society. Like the Jedi in Star Wars! There's a nobility and a purpose in what they do. Even though it takes place in the present, their lives are completely informed by their past. The purpose of this graphic organizer. You might not take all the information that you generate. It's just another way of you working through the information that you have just read about to help you get to the next step. So for me, I put down a lot of information and I don't know where this is going to lead, but I do know that when I was done doing this, I had an even deeper understanding of what I just read about and I had a better understanding of what I was supposed to do.